quote from Adam Rees, the discrepancy between the observed expansion rate of the universe and the predictions of the standard model suggests that our understanding of the universe may be incomplete. And if even a Nobel Prize winner in physics admits that we have reached the limits of our cosmological knowledge, then everyone knows what the astronomical hour has struck. Indeed, the James Webb Telescope has recently confirmed once again that the universe simply does not behave in reality as it should in theory, and is expanding significantly faster than our models allow. Today, we'll show you what this so-called Hubble tension is all about and why it's so problematic for our overall understanding of the cosmos. So stick around until the end if you want to know what solutions the experts are proposing and why Albert Einstein may have been dramatically wrong on a fundamental point. First of all, let's address a simple but crucial question. How do we even know that the universe is expanding? Well, to understand this, we need to turn back the clock about 100 years and dive straight into an era of profound change. At that time, many renowned physicists such as Albert Einstein were still convinced that the universe was neither expanding nor collapsing, but rather embodied a completely static construct that would remain rigid and unchanging for eternity. And yet, even at that time, there were bold, dissenting voices. These included the Belgian priest and astrophysicist George Lemet, who showed that Einstein's general theory of relativity could be used to develop a mathematical model describing an expanding universe. The decisive advantage here was that Lemaitre had made a prediction that could also be observed in reality. If the cosmos really is expanding, the other galaxies in space must be moving away from us, just as the dots painted on a balloon move away from each other when it is inflated. At the same time, the light from the galaxies would be stretched on its way to us and the wavelengths would be elongated and the light reaching our earthly eyes would ultimately be redshifted. In the years that followed, a certain Edwin Hubble actually succeeded in confirming exactly this. Careful observation of numerous galaxies at the Mount Wilson Observatory in California had shown that light is indeed shifted toward the red end of the spectrum, and that the expansion of the universe was therefore practically verifiable. For a better understanding, it should be briefly mentioned that the cosmos is not expanding into an already existing space, but rather that it's space itself that is constantly growing larger. And as if this discovery were not groundbreaking enough in itself, it was also linked to a no less revolutionary conclusion. If the universe is really expanding continuously, then, looking back, it must also have had an origin. In other words, a tiny starting point from which everything once emerged. Today, we know that tiny starting point as the original singularity. And we know that Lemaitre and Hubble were already doing pioneering work on the Big Bang theory back then. In the 1990s, however, astronomers realized that the universe is not simply expanding, but that it is also increasing its speed of expansion. This surprising and confusing fact demanded answers. To explain this unexpected acceleration, experts postulated the existence of dark energy a force that remains mysterious to this day and is believed to counteract the force of gravity. The problem of Hubble tension. This naturally raises the question of how fast the universe is actually expanding in detail. And although this simple question may seem rather trivial at first glance, it actually goes to the heart of a research puzzle that has been puzzling experts for many years. But first things first, basically, galaxies move away from each other at a speed that is proportional to the distance between them. In other words, if galaxy A is twice as far away from Earth as galaxy B, the distance between them also increases twice as fast. To find out how fast two galaxies are moving away from each other, you need to know their distance, and you also need a constant to multiply this distance by. This is where the Hubble constant comes into play, and this is also where things get extremely puzzling. The result we obtain depends directly on the measurement method used. One of these methods is based on cosmic microwave background radiation. This is an almost isotropic relic from the early days of the universe, which is essentially a cosmic baby photo. In combination with theoretical models of cosmic evolution, researchers can use background radiation to determine the current expansion speed of the universe. More precisely, we then obtain a value of around 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec for the Hubble constant. 
To explain briefly, one megaparsec is approximately 3.26 million light years, while one light year is 9.46 trillion kilometers. In other words, this means that the speed at which galaxies are moving away from each other in space increases by 67 kilometers per second every 3.26 million light years. That is 244,000 kilometers per hour per megaparsec, but it gets even faster. As mentioned above, the value of the Hubble constant depends on the measurement method used. When scientists consult direct astronomical observations based on supernovae, gravitational lenses, variable stars, or red giants, space suddenly expands at a speed of 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. That is 264,000 kilometers per hour per megaparsec, and thus a deviation of 20,000 kilometers per hour per megaparsec from the theoretically predicted value. This discrepancy is summarized as the Hubble tension. But how can it be explained? Well, the simplest solution would probably be that it is not real after all, but simply based on previous measurement errors. To test this assumption, a team led by Nobel Prize winner Adam Rees used the James Webb Telescope and came to a sobering conclusion. How Webb Deepened the Mystery To revisit the Hubble tension, experts at Johns Hopkins University turned their attention to supernovae, variable stars, red giants, and a class of carbon-rich giant stars that Webb had studied over two years. The next step was to compare the measured distances with those of the Hubble telescope, and to find that the discrepancy in the Hubble constant remains even in the most comprehensive Webb dataset to date. According to this, all cosmic distance markers yielded Hubble constants between 72.1 and 73.4, while the combined result for all methods was 72.6 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The idea that the Hubble constant is based on distorting measurement errors is thus receding into the distance. And Adam Rees classified this finding as follows, quote, the discrepancy between the observed expansion rate of the universe and the predictions of the standard model suggests that our understanding of the universe may be incomplete. With two NASA flagship telescopes confirming each other's results, we must take the problem of discrepancies in the Hubble constant very seriously. In detail, the Hubble tension could show that we have overlooked something crucial. According to this, it's conceivable that the faster expansion of the cosmos is based on a process or force that has not yet been taken into account in the standard model of cosmology. According to Rees, this could be an exotic form of dark energy or dark matter a new type of particle or field, or an error in our understanding of gravity. And lo and behold, the bottom line is that it is indeed possible to solve the mystery of the Hubble tension with an alternative theory of gravity. And all we have to do is abandon Einstein's established assumptions. Was Einstein wrong? In simple terms, the way out of the Hubble tension lies in the assumption that our Milky Way is located in a supervoid, or in other words, a huge empty space in the universe. A study conducted by a research team from the universities of Bonn and St. Andrews concludes that this would easily explain the mystery of the faster expansion. Large-scale surveys have shown that the largest connected structures in the universe are not scattered haphazardly, but rather arranged in a network-like structure. The lattice of this cosmic web forms what are known as filaments, which, together with the voids, span enormous, virtually matter-free bubbles. To show how this constellation makes it possible to solve one of the most perplexing research puzzles of our time, the researchers compare the Milky Way to an air bubble baked into a cake. Since the matter density around the bubble is much greater, gravitational forces emanate from it, pulling the galaxies inside toward the edge of the bubble. Applied to the Hubble tension, this means that the galaxies are moving away from us so much faster than predicted because they are subject to the effects of a local underdensity. So far, so logical. But unfortunately, there is a crucial flaw in this hypothesis. The standard model simply does not provide for such underdensities or voids. Instead, matter in space should be evenly distributed. But what if our standard model does not correspond to cosmic reality at all? Well, the authors of the study asked themselves the same question. They pointed out that the standard model is based on a theory of gravity proposed by Einstein, and that the creator of the theory of relativity was perhaps not infallible. 
It may be that gravitational forces actually behave quite differently than Einstein expected. And so it came to pass that the experts resorted to a modified theory of gravity in their computer simulation, more precisely to modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND for short. Introduced in the 1980s by Mordechai Milgram, MOND describes the rotational behavior of galaxies through modifications in the equations of motion of matter in the gravitational field, and thus completely dispenses with the mysterious dark energy. However, the alternative theory also predicts gigantic voids in space, and this is precisely the decisive factor in relation to the Hubble tension. If gravity really behaves as described by Milgram, there would in fact only be one constant for cosmic expansion, and the observed discrepancy would be due solely to irregularities in the distribution of matter. Despite all this, Mond still hasn't made it past the status of an outsider theory, and it remains to be seen to what extent it will prevail against the established assumptions of Einstein and company in the future. And speaking of asserting yourself, by clicking on the right button, you'll never miss a new video from us again. So go ahead and click on the thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. See you soon.